All right, this is a, a Jeep Liberty diesel with the EGR deleted off of it. I'm uh, gonna show you here kind of what's different. This has already been all removed. I'll go over, take you to my old engine and show you kind of what's different. So first couple things, EGR bolts in right here. There's a tube that runs from the other side around to the EGR, comes back up into the intake right here. This is capped now. So we removed the EGR, we removed all the water pipes, everything else and we've plugged the water return. Now, the EGR uses that water return up there. All right, and if you'll notice, there's another one right here. These two are the same. And uh, what I've done is I've gotten a spare plug from an old head, and I've used it to plug off over there. So that's all plugged and good. I don't know what thread that is. I could probably figure it out later if anybody actually cares. But you can use that existing plug to uh, plug the other hole if you've got a spare. Um, interestingly enough, this hole and that hole, well, they're the same, but this hole is where the temperature sensor is on the older 2.5 um, uh, CRDs. So the head is the same between the 2.5 and the 2.8. And again, the 2.5 has that hole as a temperature sensor. So that's an alternative location for a temperature sensor, or you could screw in a temperature sensor there if you just need to plug a hole. So you have a couple different options, but um, that's one side of the water uh, piping. The other side goes up across the engine, and I've removed that as well, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, these four bolts, and then I think we had one that came down there. Anyways, that's where the EGR valve and cooler and everything sit. So that's removed. Going across the back of the engine, there's a little U-bracket that goes here, kind of makes a U and bolts in there. Um, the bracket just kind of cups and cradles the tube, but I've gone ahead and removed it because it's not needed. And then it comes over to the exhaust port there. And as you can see, uh, I've capped that. So basically it's kind of the same style of cap there as it is around here. And what I actually use for that is uh, I went down and poked around the hardware store and I found a cap that worked from um, you know, some kind of electrical plug that was meant to, you know, be a conduit plug, something. So it just happened to be the right size. And I trimmed that off, uh, made that fit, and used the clamp to hold it down. Now, there is a water pipe that comes across the front here and then on down, and that's been removed. That's like the supply. And so over here, what I've done is I just have this brass joiner in. And normally there's a T piece in it, or I guess it's really actually a Y. There's a Y piece that comes in. One side goes this way, the other side goes here, and it runs across the top of the intake right there. It uses this bolt hole to hold it down. There's that hard line. So now we remove those two bits of the loop. We've simplified a little bit of this mess of hoses. These are just your heater hoses here. And uh, you know, we bypass it all, won't have all those leaks and potential. And so that's been cleaned up a little bit. Um, so I've got this engine, I'm getting it ready to go in. I've got a little bit more work to do and then it'll go on. And uh, along, the, along with that, the one thing I haven't touched on yet is the electrical delete. So there is a connector down here. And this is what would plug onto the EGR about here or so. And uh, the ECU is going to be looking for the EGR. So I'm going to have to do a little something with the ECU. Either I need to physically trick that out or I need to delete the diagnostic trouble code for it being unplugged because the ECU is going to be looking for it. So that's one little bit of electrical stuff we'll have to do. Otherwise, we'll have a check engine light. But physically, the EGR has been removed. So cap, remove plug, other cap, and we remove the factory T and just put in a brass uh, hose barb. So now, let me come over and show you the old engine where all this stuff is still <laughs> installed. As you can see, there's, there's a lot. So this is the elbow that, this uh, goes into the intake elbow, comes around. This is our actual EGR valve. There's a solenoid for it. And then here's the tube that runs over to the exhaust manifold. So we've pulled out all that. Uh, 
this engine actually didn't doesn't have the little hanger anymore. Must have been previously lost, but you can see where the hanger used to kind of sit right here. Somebody's already unbolted that. Get the light on it. So that's already gone. This, this head's been off before, probably, or somebody worked on the EGR, and that's gone. Um, try to get that light where you can see. So here's the tube that runs into the head for uh, the water return. I believe that's return. So again, I just took another one of those plugs and I put it over there. Here's the other water line you see running around. That's right there, it comes up. See, this is what runs right in front of the head and then you know, hooks on over and you have that Y line and this mess of stuff. So this is gone off of my engine. This is gone, this is gone. So I've got a plug here, remove this tube. Removed the EGR valve, EGR cooler, and then the EGR line that runs to my intake. And then I've capped my intake here. Um, yeah, both water lines gone. Plug, water line is gone. And then the T piece over here has been replaced. Well, I keep saying T. Y piece has been replaced with just a brass hose barb. So... There we go. That's basically what you have to do. It's possible to do this with the engine in place. There's just much less, much worse access. So definitely a lot easier when you have your uh, engine out. Anyways, that's the short of it. Hope somebody finds it helpful.